Hezbollah broke the deal. The ceasefire deal with the government of Lebanon, Hezbollah rejects it. Hezbollah terrorists continue to threaten Israel. They operate missile manufacturing sites. They import weapons from Syria. They move around with weapons in Lebanon. They fired rockets into Israel. All of these things are violations of the deal. Israel has responded to these violations by targeting Hezbollah. Let's remember the fundamentals of the problem here. Lebanon has an army that does not answer to the government of Lebanon. That army is called Hezbollah. It means party of God in Arabic. Hezbollah is a group of citizens of Lebanon who take their orders from the government of Iran. They think God wants them to have a separate army from the government of Lebanon and that the great mission of their life is to destroy Israel. If a country has a separate army that does not answer to its government and that army is attacking its neighbor, then the neighbor has the right to attack that army. It's called self-defense. This is basic international law. There is no international law that says Hezbollah is allowed to exist as a separate army. It's required to disarm. It has been required to disarm for a long time. The last Lebanon war in 2006 ended with a UN ceasefire resolution, 1701, that called on Hezbollah to disarm. Israel ended the war with Hezbollah on this basis, that Hezbollah would disarm. It didn't disarm. The Lebanese government didn't disarm it. The United Nations didn't disarm it. Nobody disarmed it. Iran armed it. Hezbollah grew much stronger over the years. Hezbollah's enormous power was never an international agenda item. Nobody cared. On October 8th, 2023, Hezbollah joined Hamas's war. The day before, on October 7th, Hamas invaded Israel, massacred 1,200 people, and took 251 hostages. Hezbollah was impressed by Hamas's actions and opened a second front against Israel in order to help Hamas. Hezbollah went to war for Hamas. Hezbollah attacked Israel for 11 months before Israel responded in any serious way. Hezbollah fired more than 17,000 rockets, guided anti-tank missiles, and suicide drones into Israeli cities and towns. More than 60,000 Israelis were forced to flee their homes near the border with Lebanon because Hezbollah was shooting at them. Now, we have another ceasefire deal. We can call it the Hochstein deal after the U.S. envoy who arranged it, Amos Hochstein. The Hochstein deal says that Hezbollah must disarm and get its army out of southern Lebanon. Hezbollah doesn't want to disarm. Hezbollah wants to keep its weapons. Hezbollah wants to get more weapons. Iran wants to give Hezbollah more weapons. I will quote Israel's foreign minister, Gidon Sar. This is very important. He said, the presence of Hezbollah operatives south of the Leitani is a fundamental violation of the agreement and they must move north. In plain English, if Hezbollah is armed, it's a violation of the ceasefire deal. Who's going to enforce the deal? The United Nations, the United States, Amos Hochstein, France? We all know the answer. Only Israel is going to enforce the deal. The ceasefire deal allows Israel to defend itself, and that's exactly what Israel is doing. We aren't going back to the reality of October 6, 2023. We aren't going back to a reality where terrorist armies can mobilize on Israel's borders. If Hezbollah is armed, it's a violation of the ceasefire deal. It's that simple. The entire world must demand that Hezbollah surrender its weapons and live in peace with its neighbors. We should accept nothing less. Do you agree? Let me know in the comments. Finally, I have a special message for today. Today is Giving Tuesday. It's a global day of generosity where people around the world come together to support causes they believe in. It's a moment to turn our gratitude into action. And today, we're asking you to join us in our mission. Our goal today is to raise $180,000, which will help us to continue the work we do every single day. The Israeli Citizen Spokesperson's Office is dedicated to combating misinformation, educating the world about Israel and the Jewish people, and empowering people to stand up against anti-Semitism. Through education, outreach, and media, we're fighting back in the information war against Israel and giving regular citizens the tools they need to speak up effectively and confidently. 
I'm deeply involved in this work. I believe in its impact. I see the results of your support every day in the way we shape people's understanding of Israel and the October 7th war. Your contributions fuel this critical mission. I wouldn't stand here today if I didn't firmly believe in the difference we're making together. The funds we raise today on Giving Tuesday will directly support our efforts, expanding our reach, producing high-quality content, training citizen spokespeople, and providing the resources they need to advocate effectively. Every dollar you give helps us tell Israel's story. As of right now, we have already raised $14,000 today. If you haven't had a chance to donate yet, now is the time. Click the link in our bios, wherever you're watching on social media. You can check the chat on whichever platform you're watching on social media and you will see a relevant link. You can visit our website. Our website is citizenspokes.com. That's C-I-T-I-Z-E-N, spokes, S-P-O-X, dot com. Citizen spokes, S-P-O-X, dot com. Or you can see a QR code on your screen right now. You can take a screenshot of this QR code, save it, share it with your friends, reference it later, open it up, click the link, and you will see where you can make a contribution to the Israeli Citizen Spokesperson's office. Every contribution, big or small, makes a difference. So let's come together today and show the whole world the strength of our community. Thank you all for being a part of this mission, for your support, and for helping us make Giving Tuesday a success. I will now take some questions from those of you watching live on our social media channels. Thank you so much, Daniel. Our first question comes from Danny on Instagram. Is there any truth to the rumors that Assad has asked Israel for help to fight the rebels in exchange for his help to bring down the Iranian regime? I have seen these reports, and I have seen nothing to verify that they're true, and I've seen nothing to refute them that they are false. What is the situation right now? We've seen in the past week that rebels in Syria have taken over the city of Aleppo. This is a major city in Syria that rebels, people fighting against the regime of Bashar al-Assad, have taken control, and it's unclear what the future is going to be. Is Assad going to be able to crack down on these rebels as he has over the past decade, or is the Assad regime in trouble? Right now, Israel is watching, not getting involved. What we do know is that the Iranian regime is attacking Israel on seven different fronts, And Syria is one of those fronts where the Iranian regime is present, the Revolutionary Guard is present, Iranian forces are present, and they are there on the side of Bashar al-Assad. So if Bashar al-Assad and the Iranians are consumed with something else besides the seven-front war that they're fighting against Israel, this may be a positive development, but it remains to be seen how things will play out, and it remains to be seen what Bashar al-Assad will ask of Israel and what Israel would demand in exchange. Thank you. Our next question is from Rachel on Instagram. With how much damage has been done to Hamas's leadership, are we any closer to getting our hostages back? I hope so. As you are right to mention, significant damage has been done to Hamas's leadership. Yahya Sinwar, the head of Hamas in Gaza, was eliminated on the battlefield. Mohammed Daif, the number two of Hamas in Gaza and one of the chief architects of the October 7th massacre was eliminated in Gaza. Ismail Haniya, Hamas's leader, who was based in Qatar, when he was visiting Iran, he was eliminated there in a targeted strike. So it is correct that Iran has faced, uh, excuse me, Hamas has faced enormous pressure on its ability to function, but Hamas continues to function in Gaza. Hamas has a military force in Gaza that has been damaged but it is not eliminated. And there are many Hamas guys in Gaza who continue to hold 101 Israeli hostages in their underground terror dungeons. The Prime Minister of Israel has offered a cash reward to anyone who ensures the safe release of Israeli hostages in Gaza. And he has also promised safe passage to any Hamas terrorist who is holding a hostage. So in exchange for his life and a nice sum of money, 
All the Hamas guy has to does is release the, do is release the hostage and he can live. We are hoping and trying to find out ways that hostages can be released, that contacts can be established with what remains of Hamas in certain parts of Gaza. I am watching the news reports just as you are, and I'm hoping for something positive. From YouTube, is Unifil doing anything at all for the ceasefire? What about the Lebanese army? I didn't hear the last question, so I... Is Unifil doing anything at all for the ceasefire? And what about the Lebanese army? Again. Is Unifil doing anything at all for the ceasefire? Or what about the Lebanese army? Question. Um, Right now, it seems like nobody's doing anything in Lebanon to disarm Hezbollah, to stop Hezbollah, except Israel. According to this ceasefire deal that was recently agreed to between Israel and the government of Lebanon and the previous ceasefire agreement that was agreed to in 2006, the government of Lebanon is the prime body that is responsible for disarming Hezbollah in Lebanon. The government of Lebanon needs to take responsibility for the future of Lebanon. We are still waiting for the Lebanese armed forces to take responsibility for its country and disarm Hezbollah. The United Nations is supposed to be there to support them in this effort, but instead what we're seeing is the United Nations just sitting and watching. So I'm not sure what's going to come of it. Remember, this ceasefire deal was a 60-day deal. It was not agreed that it would be permanent. It's a 60-day deal. We'll see what happens based on these terms. Right now, as we can see, Hezbollah is not disarming, and they're still moving around in southern Lebanon with weapons. So until the Lebanese government, until the United Nations, until France, until the United States can do more to pressure Hezbollah to disarm, we're going to be exactly where we are now. Thank you, Daniel. This is our final question. What sets apart your organization from others that people might donate to on Giving Tuesday? And how can I help promote the campaign on social media or within my community? Well, thank you for this question. What I, what I see here every day and the people I work with in front of the camera, behind the camera, what sets them apart is their um, incredible experience in the field and their expertise on all of the issues that concern us all. We are not um, people who haven't been doing this for a long time. Our team includes former members of Knesset, former elected officials, former military spokespeople, people who've worked in government and in politics. And right now we find ourselves as private citizens and we want to do everything we can to help Israel in the October 7th war. And we have come together to do just that. And I'll let you be the judge on how we're doing. But if you're asking this question, it indicates that you think we're doing a good job and we greatly appreciate that. As far as how you can spread the word, there are a number of ways. First of all, in general, please, if you're watching, share our social media platforms with all of your friends. The more we grow our followers, the more we're able to spread the word about what we're doing and tell the accurate story about Israel. And specifically, the links that we've mentioned, the links are going to be in the bios of our social media platforms. They've been pasted in the chat. Earlier, we shared a QR code. And very simply, you can share our website, Citizen Spokes. That's citizenspox.com. If you share this website, you will see all the information first about Giving Tuesday, how you can contribute to our effort. And you'll also see more about our organization and the wonderful people that are involved with it, which I think is what sets us apart from all the rest. That's all we have time for today. This has been the live daily briefing of the Israeli Citizen Spokesperson's Office. It is Giving Tuesday. We thank you again for watching. Thank you for your contributions. I'm Daniel Rubenstein. We'll see you back here tomorrow at 3 p.m. Israel time, 8 a.m. Eastern. Have a lovely day.